please note that this video contains spoilers. Season 7, Thoughts. I will try to be chronological about this. There's a lot to talk about in this season. Deja vu. I just gotta say, I do find it quite annoying that, you know, Barbus just dies very first episode, you know, at the climax, and after, you know, a bit of a struggle, but still, just, and, you know, gone. It just feels anticlimactic, but I don't know, I guess we had seen about all, you know, it's like with Cole, you can only do so much with just one character, with, you know, before you start repeating yourself, and... We did, you know, he had a nice run. We got a lot of fun out of Barbus, especially in the sixth season. <sighs> this season has some really bad episodes, especially early on. I guess whether or not you like Charmed is, you know, whether or not you like Pirates. I guess they had just watched Pirates of the Caribbean. They even pretty much admit it. You know, they title drop it once and refer to it at least one other time in that episode. Once in a Blue Moon just doesn't make a lot of sense. It feels like they really wanted to have werewolves, but not have it be the entire focus of the story, or they couldn't figure out a way to have, you know, the other stuff that has to happen in that episode happen, you know, Leo getting possessed and all. So they just made up, hey, every 50 years the Charmed Ones turn into werewolves. Or they turn into wolves, I guess. I do quite like the, yes, I, I think the episode is someone to witch over me with the the name exactly escapes me at the moment, but the Demons who move extremely fast and you know who have those have those nice blades. Those are pretty cool. And that about brings me to the avatars. I know a lot of people don't like the whole avatar arc and storyline. I personally think think it's one of the most interesting things in the entirety of the Charmed series. With all the, you know, it's a question that has to be asked, you know, could it be done in another way? You know, does it have to be a battle between good and evil? And, you know, the avatars kind of do offer the alternative, you know, either there is a battle between good and evil, and you know, in the show it's quite literal, in reality it's, you know, the good and evil aspects of our, you know, human nature that have to struggle, you know, because you can't, you can't be constantly, like, naive and just giving all the time, you have to also think of yourself sometimes, it needs to be a balance, you know, I'm not going to get too much into that now, and, you know, the avatars present this alternative, which is, you know, no conflict whatsoever, basically, or at least, you know, once it gets to a certain threshold, a dictatorship, you know, basically, and I'm not going to get all political here, but this basically is, you know, China today. You know, you have the people basically just live with this, you know, idea that everything is good, you know, and... You know, if someone actually, you know, messes things up for other people, it's that one person. It doesn't, you know, cause, you know, some kind of revolt, you know. It's like they chose what the Avatars, you know, just did. You know, you could almost call the Avatars sort of like more invading communist regime kind of thing. You know, they just take over, you know, like most communist regimes, and just in general the the look and the style of the avatars I really love. Joel, I don't know, Switao, I guess that's how you pronounce his last name, 
as, you know, alpha. It's just awesome, you know, and this is, they were briefly set up in the fifth season, you know, with Cole, and here we see more of them, and we have this kind of back and forth, can we trust them, can we not, you know, somewhat like with Chris in the sixth season, and as with Kyle Brody in the season, can we trust him, can we, you know, not, and I really like that it's an actual arc. It takes place over several episodes. So much of Charmed is so confined to singular episodes, and there are a lot of limitations to having to fit the entire story into a single episode. You know, only the m main cast remain the same, but really, in most of the episodes. And with the avatars, they actually set something up. They spend much of a season on this, you know. Also with Brody and the whole Homeland Security, although the Homeland Security bit only really, you know, comes back at the finale, and I'll get to that in this video. The... And, you know, also Brody... I like him. He's... It has that kind of, you know, he just makes you doubt the avatars, and it's also just interesting to finally have a character who's so very defined by having been hurt by this battle between good and evil. You know, we do find out that it's not the avatars who directly killed him, it was demons, but over the course of the show, you know, obviously the Charmons try to save the innocents and try not to you know, have someone grow up without their parents and such, but here we have a character who did grow up without parents because of demons, and, you know, and it's somewhat realistically handled, actually. He, you know, talks about how people tried to reach out to him, and he fought back, you know, he didn't just, because that is often what happens when, you know, you have to go through the system when you don't have your, you know, biological parents. Or at least, you know, good adoptive parents, maybe, from a very young age. And he just, you know, and, and him turning into a white lighter after the whole Avatar thing is over with is also a pretty good, you know, again, we haven't really seen that as such. We've seen characters we knew were meant to be white lighters, but this is the first time where we see a character, and after they die, we are told that they, you know, what they did during their life was important enough that they, and, and good enough, uh, that they actually, you know, became a white lighter. And we also have Zhang Ku, played spot on by Oded Fur. Again, not sure about the pronunciation. He is just so deliciously creepy and evil and cruel, you know. One of his defining characteristics is his penchant for killing his minions. Just like that, you know, just if he doesn't need them anymore, or, or they annoy him, you know. And that's another thing, we actually have an evil who is present throughout much of the season. You know, we see the the demons decide to unleash Zanku, you know, because they fear that he's the only one who can fight the Avatars and they're right. Or at least he's the one we see fight the Avatars. Granted, the source also was, you know, a consistent threat, but it was never on this kind of level, you know. Zanku is in maybe a third, maybe even half, although not entirely sure about that, of the episodes of the season. He really, he just keeps coming back, and he has plans. He has really clever, you know, he has his weaknesses. He's too arrogant, too focused on the sisters, but he really gets close, you know. And, you know, the second to last episode, great setup for a finale with him ending up with the book. Although, okay, the makeup on 
you know, the the black cop. I don't offend Davidson, maybe. Pretty good makeup, I'll grant that. But he does not look like he's been dead for, what was it, three, four years. I'm sorry, there'd be more decay. I guess it was a budget issue or something. He, I like that they did bring bring back that actor, and he does a pretty good job of, you know, he seems really ticked off that he had to die, and he makes some com pretty compelling points. You know, you can tell why it really, you know, gets to the sisters, and to Phoebe. Yeah, the white guy from the beginning of the episode, he really overacts once he dies, you know. I, I guess it killed his acting ability, or his constraint. And I guess that pretty much brings me to the finale. Okay, so background, the finale was supposed to be the series finale, originally. They weren't sure they were going to get a, an eighth season. And when we actually got an eighth season, you can tell maybe sort of why. Maybe they just had, maybe they tapped into Phoebe's power of premonition, they saw what the eighth season was going to be like, and they said, nah, I don't think so. And then they saw the money it was raking in, and they said, okay, sure. If it had been a season finale, I'd have been pretty bit disappointed, but at least it would sort of work, because it does finish off the story, or at least most of the way through the episode finishes the story. Once the whole astral projecting thing comes in, and he, and they actually survive, I think the big problem is that it spends so much effort setting up this is it, this is the end. There have been other season finales where you maybe thought that was going to be the last, you know, if you if you were watching it or when it originally aired and you didn't know there were going to be more seasons, you might have thought this is going to be it, this is the very last episode. Clearly they can't, you know, pick it up after that. But when you go back and rewatch those episodes, they still really work. I love the third season finale, and when you look at that, the ending of that really looks like it's gonna be just... There's not gonna be anything after that. Or at least, you know... You're left wondering how it's going to be continued. This one... You know, you have the... You know, they mention Quake, and wow, that was a long time ago, and they have the Prue thing with the astral projecting and everything. They have the will, they leave the children to, you know, their father. All of that, it really sets up, you know, girls, I don't think we're going to make it out of this one. It so much sets up that it isn't going to continue, that when it does continue, it just feels sort of anticlimactic. It feels like we should have gotten an ending to the show, and then it just isn't. Now, as for why I would not have liked this to be, you know, if they had died and there hadn't been an eighth season, I would have thought it, I mean, I think it's a line of Phoebe's. If we die, the everything we fought for, for the last seven years will be for nothing. And that's kind of how I feel about it, too. If the Charmed Ones die, it's not that the battle between good and evil ends. It's not like Zanku is the last one. We thought the source might be, you know, the big deal, and then it still went on for a long time after that. Yes, Zanku has been set up as a big demon throughout this season, but that's it. He hasn't been mentioned before. The source appeared over several seasons, you know, and reappeared. With Zanku... <laughs> You know, it's not like they've even, you know, done that much damage to the underworld either. I mean, okay, Zanku has killed a lot of his own demons, but... And, you know, the Avatar thing did kill a lot of demons as well. But still, it's not like they can just... The battle between good and evil wouldn't end by the Charmed Ones dying. It's more likely that the evil side would just win. And... That just doesn't... That's a fine ending for some things, but it doesn't fit with Charmed. Not in the least. 
it's tonally all wrong. Now, with how it does end, they just kind of quit their jobs, don't they? You know, they're, they're like the protectors of the entire world, and they just quit their jobs. That's a really sucky ending. You know, it's like... They should have kind of learned from the whole Avatar thing that there needs to be this battle between good and evil. You know, do they really think that everything's just going to work out fine without them? You know, have they forgotten about all the innocence they've saved, all the good that they've done? I don't know, maybe the Avatar thing was supposed to set up that they really do want to stop fighting, but it just feels like, yeah, like I just said, they should have learned from that, that you can't just up and quit. They're important, you know. If it had been that the nature of the battle changed somehow or something, if they went to the elders and demanded more assistance, you know, because they are so important, Maybe, but just to quit. As a season finale, no, I, I just don't really see it. It just... I don't know, I guess it does make me want to see the eighth season somewhat, but it feels like a bad way to do that, you know? it's It doesn't feel like it closes off. You know, again, after all that setup to finishing like that, but yeah, I think that's it for this one. Actually, scratch that. I'm not sure how I forgot about these episodes. Charm Noir, one of my favorites of the entire series. I love the film noir genre, and it's just such a fun send up of it, and sort of also works as. An entry into the genre. You know, it's like with Scream. You have to respect and understand what you're making fun of. And, you know, again, as with Scream, it's part also just an entry into it. You know, it isn't only trying to be funny, it's also trying to be dramatic. You know, there are scenes in it that really aren't funny as a parody of noir or some such, but they just really work as a noir kind of thing. You know, Brody getting beat up and Paige not being able to rescue him immediately. That's not funny. That's just a kind of, you know, charm. It's, it's a noir kind of thing. You know, you have this really bad situation with, you know, corrupt, you know, police. Uh, yeah, it, it just, that really works. I don't quite like Drake and his entire, you know, he has this three episode arc, which is really established from the first of them that there's only going to be those three. So the first one, he becomes, you know, Robin Hood. Why? Because the, the writers really wanted a Robin Hood episode, and it doesn't even make that much sense. It's kind of like the Bear Witch Project episode, you know, it just doesn't make that much sense that, you know, a naked woman would necessarily cause that kind of change. Yeah, you know. And I just gotta mention, I cannot stand Leslie, you know, just... I don't even remember the guy's name right now, but just, dude, stick to singing. Dude, just go away. Just... No. No more. <sighs> okay, so the second episode of Drake, Show Ghouls. At least we get David Anders for that one. And yeah, th th that dude is never not fun to watch. You know, it just... <sighs> and the overall idea, I guess, is sort of okay of this kind of loop of, you know, it all, you know, of the fire, and David Anders wants to escape. But then you have to wonder why he's so bad at it. You know, he does such a poor job of, you know, hiding when he comes back. You know, he must have known that there were people, you know, expecting, 
you know, that is expecting Drake to behave a certain way and that he couldn't, yeah, it just, and then we have the third one, The Seven Year Witch with Cole's Return. I do quite like that because I can't think of a Cole episode that I don't at least like a little bit because it's Cole. It just inherently, I mean, even with the less compelling writing of the seventh season, of, with the, you know, I mean, go back and rewatch like the third season, the fourth, the fifth. It's just more compelling dialogue and just better, you know, he's made to, I don't say overact, but just the acting isn't as, quite as credible, but it's still Cole, you know, and he still does a really good job, and it's such a good closure to the Cole character. You know, last time we saw him, you know, he died because he was obsessed with getting Phoebe to love him again. And he, you know, basically, I mean, he hated the other two sisters, and he also got to hate Phoebe because she couldn't love him. This time, he's had some years to think about it. <laughs> Go to your room. And he's... He's come back to a more sensitive and sensible kind of approach to, you know, he still loves Phoebe, clearly, and he accepts that he can't have love. That's like his punishment, you know, for the evil that he did do over the course of the series. But he doesn't want that to happen to Phoebe, and he sees her rejecting love, so he you know, he has Drake try to, you know, awaken her love of love. And it just, it really works as something he would do, you know, and yeah, I just, I quite like that. About the Avatars, clearly they had just watched the Matrix trilogy. You know, Leo might as well change the first letter of his name to an N. Just the, the appearance, the grandiose speeches of the avatars, the, the whole look and yeah, quite clearly. And then we have, you know, other than that, we have at the in the season finale, you know, the power of premonition enables Zanku to, you know, have kind of an advantage in not the final battle, but a you know a showdown between them again, Matrix. So yeah. Also, wasn't it established that Prue couldn't use her powers? When she asked for projected, why can Paige use hers, you know, to... I just realized clearly that's not the astro... I guess, or they... I don't know. Maybe that was the real, you know, charmed ones, and they just ran, and they orbed into the manor, and then they asked for projected back to magic school really quickly. I don't know. Maybe. But... <sighs> Could they even say the spell with Astral Project? I'm, I'm asking here, I don't actually remember because it's been so long since I saw a witch Astral Project. It just, it seems to me like that wasn't the case. Like they couldn't really... But anyway. Then we have Little Box of Horrors. A decent enough you know, rendition of the whole Pandora's Box story. And... Clearly, they had just watched, you know, Daredevil or Electro, yeah, with the whole, and man, what's her name, Kiara or something, the smile, I, I think Julia Roberts wants, you know, the size of her mouth back, and imaginary fiends, I quite like, you know, it, 
how can you not love adult Wyatt? You know, whether he's good, whether he's evil, this is the first time we see him as good. You know, in the sixth season, we did see adult Wyatt as evil several times. Here we see him as good. It's the same actor. He does a fantastic job still. You know, he, the acting is just phenomenal. They must, when they cast him, they must have figured, we're going to use this guy to play the good version at some point. And had him do, you know, performances for both. And had, you know... It's just really, really compelling. And I just love seeing... Because when you see good Wyatt as an adult, you can see that that's the future of good magic right there. You know, that... You can really believe that there is hope for the future with that as the and him then turning back into the evil Wyatt and you know he actually really nearly you know wins I guess and Leo his father is the one to bring him back out of it with the whole the connection between a father and son you know even as evil Wyatt is not strong enough to kill his own father I, I just thought that really worked very well, and maybe also the idea of the whole imaginary friend kind of thing luring you and then turning you evil with the help of a teddy bear, of transference of evil or good energy. That really worked well, I thought. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.